this video here is about learning how to use Linux Mint, Linux Mint Cinnamon uh, by request from one of my users he's a new Mint user and wanted to learn some more of the uh, modifications and the nuances of Linux Mint so here you go today on Tux Tech TV Um, my panel is already modified again in this one <laughs> here today I'm gonna show you guys how to install the pithos application let me see if I don't remember if I have it on okay I don't have it on my Linux Mint machine but I'm gonna see if I could install it here so that you guys can see how to get that done but yeah Linux Mint, here it is. Just like in Windows, it has your Windows pop-up menu, but it's called a Mint menu here. And um, some of the subcategories are here on your left, and when you go to all applications, it generally shows you all of your applications, plain and simple. And if you actually wanna find something, you just type it in. I'm just going to type up um, system. So it'll pull up a listing of your printers and your system information. Let me show you guys that. System info is showing that I am running Linux Mint 17.3 Cinnamon 64 bit. Um, Cinnamon version is 2.86 and the kernel is 319.32 which is old on my gnome desktop i am running four what is it 42.32 i believe it's running um this is a quad core intel cpu that's hyper threading so it shows eight cores eight gigs of ram and a 120 gigabyte drive I know it's only showing 1.7, 107.1, but it's a 120 gig drive. Um, that's basically what space I have free on the drive. Um, anyway, in your system settings here, if you wanna modify your UI, uh, basically when the system is first installed, you will have your green folders and you will see right here in the bottom left where it says files my file folder right there you will see it change on the fly I actually had the blue folders boom blue uh, I actually think it was the aqua I had yeah I like the aqua color um, no actually yeah I could change this to aqua also mint x aqua so that uh, certain buttons and stuff in menus you can see here or um, stuff that is highlighted as far as um, things that you click to check off will be in the same color as the folders to kind of have that universal theme across the board um, up here your window borders you could change it to any one of these that you see here but I'm gonna keep the uh, stock look right here with the mint x um the other stuff here is kind of old looking to me um let's see if i change it to the mint box um i don't like that <laughs> so i'm gonna put it back to the mint x look uh the linux mint panel below you could actually change the color of the panel uh, i'm gonna change it to the aqua theme you can see that it changed but I kind of like having that darker panel at the bottom uh, I don't know why but I kind of like that darker panel at the bottom it's less distracting 
especially when I have a bunch of things on this on, on the uh, screen or whatever have you if I'm trying to concentrate on reading something I don't like that panel to be all dark I mean all white I mean, yeah, my bear with me folks my keyboard here is running low on juice so from time to time it cuts off and I gotta keep turning it off and on so that it could reconnect and it's a pain in the butt when it's running low on juice that's what happens that's a good indicator that it's running low but I'm gonna have to make this quick but anyway I have some updates here and when you generally click this arrow here to go back it goes back to your system settings and you could modify your effects and stuff like that in these settings here like I said in the past play with your Linux enjoy your Linux um, all the different backgrounds from the different versions of Linux that came Linux Mint that were released in the past uh, Rosa, Rebecca, Rafaela and uh, Kina I think it's pronounced Kina um, yeah so you could change those to whatever background that you want there um, this system is actually running on a old SSD I have I have another one that's actually being shipped uh, I paid only $32 for it um, it was on back order on Newegg because it was such a popular hard drive that came out it's actually a rival to the Mushkin, Mushkin drive it's a high performance drive um, uh, it's a high performance drive for a very low price I should say um, it has very good reviews on Newegg like I said so I was gonna buy check test it out and uh, see how well it works on the Linux and I will do a quick review on that for you guys also and here in Linux Mint like I showed you guys in the uh, Ubuntu GNOME the reason why I said that Zorin, Zorin Mint Unity and I said, did I say Zorin Mint? Zorin OS, <laughs> Unity, and Ubuntu GNOME has the same uh, interface when it comes to these settings here. So right here, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually change your passwords here in Mint. So like, I, like you saw there, I had to actually highlight the uh, user, and um, you could actually switch it to whether you want it to be standard or administrator I keep it as an administrator so that I could um, install and or remove um, applications that I do or don't want on my system and down here where you see the add button you could actually add users and over here you have your groups I'm not gonna toy with that right now that'll be for you guys to use at your own discretion and like I said if you happen to break your machine and you can't log in or make any um, critical changes or pertinent changes to your machine that's why you have a copy of a disk or it's on a USB stick you don't need a key just reinstall it it takes less than an hour in most cases unless you got some old raggedy machine from 1990 something get rid of it <laughs> love your Linux people I love mine anyway Linux Mint uh, hot corners that you have in Ubuntu GNOME you could set up hot corners here too so basically if I have uh, yeah I'll just do this let me see Just those two and let me see if it works. No. I don't think my hot corners are active. Um I haven't done this before in Oh okay. Okay, I don't want the icon visible, so yeah, there we go. If you jam your cursor in the corner there, it makes them go away or come back, which is what I have set up here. Or if you want to view all your workspaces you could have that there 
um, I don't have multiple workspaces on this I'd rather to have if you don't have multiple monitors you can set up workspaces basically this gives you the ability to set these features up so that you know it could be something that you could use as a shortcut rather than having multiple monitors so this makes it useful for you if you don't like to have all that clutter on your screen um, you could set an individual window to an individual virtual desktop that's what that will be for but anyway um, you got your sticky notes here these docklets um, account details uh, da, 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 da. extensions these extensions here um, you could get additional extensions uh, where we go here we go um, any available extensions as far as for doing the desktop cube um, I don't think I've ever tried to do the desktop cube here but I don't think it's enabled uh, I will have to enable it to do the uh, desktop cube I'm not gonna do it because I'm afraid something's gonna break anyway you can set up your wobbly windows plus this isn't using a uh, discrete GPU it's actually using an Intel GPU that is not very powerful at all it's uh, quite flaky when it comes to power um, if you do have a discrete GPU uh, which I would recommend if you actually have uh, what is it from like maybe a GTX 430 all the way up to the 9 series GPUs you could actually set up that desktop cube feature um, with the uh, NVIDIA driver and have that taken care of. We have our tablets here. If you have a Wacom tablet com, uh, connected to your device, um, you could go into your graphics and use whatever graphics tool that you have, whether it be My Paints, uh, Krita, or even Blender. Um, you could use that Wacom tool to, in those graphics tools to create whatever you need or want that your mouse modifications there system info your power like I showed you in the GNOME user interface which is very similar here I put never and never as far as the power settings so that stuff doesn't go to sleep when I don't want it to um, printer settings here if you actually have a printer connected to your computer you just click that printer click uh, click the printer icon here click add It'll search and find whatever printer you have connected via USB. Search for the drivers. And then from there, you continue to click forward. And you should be good with that. And might I recommend that you guys use either HP or Epson, excuse me, HP or Epson printers. I don't recommend Canon printers, which they suck anyway. Um, Epson printers are great. Um, HP printers, I'll say about 90% of them actually are work with the default Linux uh, driver. So if you want to use an HP printer, I've harped on about this in the past too. And I also have another video showing you guys how to find what HP printer actually works with your Linux computer. Um, if you actually go to my website I will actually put a link of my website in the description below also but anyway you can search for additional drivers here type in your password and it'll do its thing find whatever available drivers it might find something for my Intel GPU possibly not but <laughs> yeah didn't find anything at all but um like I said this is running with the uh, Intel chip Intel GPU Intel whatever and uh, it kinda sucks I don't do much on this desktop that's why I have Linux Mint running on it because it's a very low brow device it has 8 gigs of RAM but I try not to push it too hard I'm gonna see if I could put a low profile graphics card in it it's a uh, 
very small case, so I'll have to install it. I kind of deviated from the task at hand, but anyway, back to that. Um, this is a Martian video that I have pretty much um, ripped from a Blu-ray that I have, so that's not anything that I downloaded online, so don't get all crabby about it, Google or YouTube. Anyway, that should be it in a nutshell. I don't know if I missed anything. I probably did. But anyway, time and date. Let me go back to that. Um, here in the time and date, you have to unlock that just like you do with the um, passwords. So once you unlock it, you will see this turn from black and all black and white to color, which is showing your location. And you could actually change that. Switch it to New York. Um, I'm actually in Florida. So, uh, scroll up to the top here. Yada, yada, yada. Wow, they don't actually have something for Florida. So, if you can't find your location, you should be able to just hover your cursor there and click, and it'll take you there. But it keeps putting me on um, NASA. Which is in the Bahamas, which is not too far away, and I'm not too concerned about that. But anyway, on your clock, your 24 hour, usually it's set up like this, which is like military time. I'm not in the military, damn it, so switch that back to off to the 24 hour setting, and it will give you the official time to wherever your location is. Anyway, backing up. A lot of people don't know how to actually change that, so. Oh, I am not there I am here anyway a lot of people don't know how to change that so that's why I did that to show you guys how to get it done anyway back and that should be it basically if you want to make any um, changes to how your setup looks you could do that here with your themes your icons and whatever else have you um, you could even change the font desktop fonts so whatever you want um, I like the Ubuntu font I could actually change all of this back to the uh, Ubuntu font I believe but I am going to cancel that I will leave whatever defaulted fonts that they have here and um, yeah I guess that will be it for this I don't want to rant too much or continue talking about Linux Mint it's uh, a dead horse that's been beaten to submission many, 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 many times before. So I'm not going to go through it too much with this. Oh, I almost forgot. I said that I was going to show you guys how to install Pithos. My bad. So, quick now. Yeah, let me. All right, quick, Chris, be quiet. I was watching the Linux action show before I was motivated to do this. But anyway, so Pithos is the application, right? So I'm gonna type for Pithos, here we go. Pithos radio client. Da 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 da, that's all that, jibba jabba. And let me see if this have any specified PPA for Linux Mint because sometimes you try to install an Ubuntu PPA and it doesn't work in Linux Mint. Why is that? I have no idea. But anyway, um, let me do this. Okay, and let me go here. And I am going to create a document empty one and I am going to call it get those app enter open it up and what I could do here is copy the whole schmaltz bode copy and paste it right here and then save it right here so that uh, if you guys actually want to install this it'll be in the description below but anyway copy 
open your terminal, control, alt, and T at the same time, then control plus shift plus V to paste it. Then you enter, enter your password, enter. Oh, caps lock is probably on. Yeah, caps lock was on. So there that goes. After you enter your password, you're gonna see this script pop up asking if you wanna continue or cancel. So you just hit enter and it's actually gonna place this PPA where it needs to be along with the key. So then you go here and you copy. Like I said, this is gonna be in the description below. This is actually, it's a little bit of a process to get certain apps installed in um, in Linux, but um, it's not difficult. So if you actually have to use terminal, this is how easy it is. Stop being a scared little wuss. Copy and paste, copy and paste, copy. That's it. Copy, see? See how easy this is? Or how hard it is, some people like to exaggerate. Look at that, look at that, people, look at that. It's there now. If you wanna see if it's in your system, you press your Windows key, and look, you type in Pithos. And voila, people, Pithos. So then you type in your email, I'm not gonna show you guys that there, but um, I don't want some random schmuck emailing me. But anyway, you type in your email for your um, Pandora client or your Pandora website account, and you type in your password for your Pandora setup, okay? Okay? After you do that, then you press okay. Well, actually, I digress. You change this audio quality setting to high change that to high so if you want that 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 nice crisp sound coming coming out of your stream you always put that on high because if it's on medium or low it, it it's it's not really good if you have a slow internet setup go to low you have no choice but to go to low but if you have anything above five megabits a second download speed you could you could get away with a high setting so go ahead and click high click OK and then it'll search for your account yada 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 and then boom all of your listings will pop up right there in the Pithos window and you're good to go done 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 Pithos setup done it's gonna be in the description don't trip see you guys later holla